Good morning, everyone. All right, we got started off with uh, some exciting music. Um, some of you are so excited, you're applauding in the middle, and guess what? That's just what the composer wanted you to do. He wanted you to be excited about the music, so don't feel bad about not knowing when it ends. It's exciting the whole time. The composer of the piece we just named was named Rossini. He was Italian, and this piece was written almost 200 years ago, perhaps, perhaps a little longer than 200 years ago, and its Italian name is La Gazza Ladra, which means the thieving magpie. A magpie is a, a rather noisy, hoppy bird that likes to purloin or steal things from people, and that's the plot of an opera that we don't hear too much of, but the overture is still very famous. Well, welcome uh, to the Arlene Schnitzer Concert Hall. Many of you have never been here to see this beautiful building before, and many of you, I imagine, have never heard this beautiful orchestra before. This is the Portland Youth Philharmonic that has been providing concerts now uh, for nearly 99 years, uh, including concerts for, um, sometimes we say young people, in this case we say younger people, since you're only a few years different in age from those who are performing today. And in addition to hearing some wonderful music that's written much more recently than the piece we just heard, uh, we're going to meet the families and sections of the Portland Youth Philharmonic, and we're gonna start right now with the woodwinds, which are right in the middle of the orchestra, and we're gonna hear each section play a tune that hopefully you will recognize and enjoy, starting with our flute section. That was our flute section, and you also heard the uh, smaller member of the, the flute family, which is called the piccolo. Piccolo means little in Italian, and it plays an octave higher than the flute. You may also, if you can see, notice that uh, despite being a woodwind instrument in, in the modern times, mostly flutes are made of metal. That's a long story, but let's just say they used to be made of wood and therefore fit in just fine. The next member of the woodwind family we're going to meet uh, instead of uh, blowing across the end of the instrument like you would on a, a soda bottle, is our oboe section, which uses two pieces of cane or grass tied together to make their tone. Uh, let's hear what the oboes have to play.
Those are the oboes, the oboes, don't forget that. Many of you will have the opportunity to choose an instrument to play, so you have to listen carefully to the tones that they make and see which one really excites you, and that will be the one you pick, no matter what its possible downsides are in the future. Um, let's move to the second row of the woodwind section uh, to an instrument that many of you will be familiar with, the clarinet, and the bass clarinet also. The clarinet and the bass clarinet. And now the, one of the most fun instruments of the woodwind family, uh, the bassoon, uh, which um, the bassoon, actually, the name of it comes from French, basson, which means bass sound, which is what we're going to hear, including a very bass sound from the contra bassoon or double bassoon. That's the bassoon and the contra bassoon. Would you hold uh, hold the bassoon up just so they can see what it what it looks like? There you go. So it's a very interesting looking instrument. You could it, it don't worry. It comes apart so you can fit it on the school bus. It's always like that. Uh, sitting directly behind the bassoons, we're going to move into our next family of instruments, the brass family. Most of you are familiar with brass instruments and the things that they can do. Uh, hold up a, a few of the horns. We have horns back there, sometimes called French horn, but generally they like to be called horn. And despite all that complication, uh, they make a quite glorious and noble sound. Let's hear it. <laughs> So uh, let's move to our next member of the brass family, the trumpets. I think you all know what they sound like, but they're going to show you anyway. Thank you. 
For hundreds of years, the trumpet has been used to uh, give composers extra power and grace in orchestral writing, and long before that, they were telling the army which way to march, and so they're indispensable in the history of music. And we're going to go behind them. We have our low brass section, which has decided, for the purposes of today's concert, to separate themselves into trombones first, and uh, then the tubas next. So let's hear what the trombones have to play for us. You can see all of them back there. Next to the trombones is the bass member of the brass family. Most of you are familiar with it. It's called the tuba. And this year, we happen to have two players of the tuba, so they worked up their own demo for you today. You should know that all these demonstrations of the individual sections of the orchestra are the music for them is chosen by the players of the orchestra, arranged uh, just for this audience, just for you. Um, and uh, I'm sure you appreciate it very much. And once we hear the rest of them, I'll ask for a special round of applause for our musicians. But now it's time to play a piece of orchestral music for you. Uh, this one was composed especially for these musicians uh, by a man named Jeff Scott. Jeff Scott is a professor at the Oberlin Conservatory. We're going to play Jeff's piece. Uh, called the uh, the journey that he wrote for us. The first part of it is called the awakening, and it is uh, will sound very much to you like it comes from a film uh, that might be a little scary in nature. So be prepared for some uh, sounds that might cause anxiety, but don't worry, nothing is actually going to happen other than that we'll finish the piece.
now we must meet the largest body, the largest family of instruments in the orchestra. It's the ones sitting right here at the front there. They're called the string instruments. I'm sure you know that they are generally played by uh, drawing the bow across the string, sometimes by plucking the strings, and in a few cases, a few miscellaneous ways. We're going to meet them from the lowest, biggest member, which is over in this corner, uh, to, the, to the smallest. So this is our double bass section. We're going to move now to the next large, the next smallest instrument of the string section. They're seated right here. There are cellos. Those are the cellos. And uh, in the section next to them is an instrument that looks very much like the violin, but is very much not. Uh, it is slightly larger and uh, plays one fifth lower or half an octave. And they are the violas. The violas, the violas. So we have one, one instrument left, and uh, in an orchestra, the violins are divided into two sections. Now, some orchestras have all the violins, both first and second violins, all grouped on one side of the stage. I find that they tend to gang up on me when we do that, so we keep them separated, like any good teacher would do in a proper classroom. And uh, they're going to play together, so I need to get out of their way so they can see each other while they play their demo.
We're going to play our next piece now, a piece that was not originally written for the musicians of this orchestra, but was premiered, given its first performance ever, by, by this orchestra in November, with the composer in attendance, and he loved the performance so much that he dedicated the piece to the Portland Youth Philharmonic. His name is Farhad Popel, and uh, he was born in Iran and now lives in England. Uh, his uh, piece is called Childhood Memories. We'll be playing the last part of it. Uh, and the childhood memories in question are uh, Iranian tunes sung to him by his grandmother. So please enjoy the last section of Childhood Memories.
We have one more piece for you, but before we do that, we have one section of the orchestra you have not met yet. Does anyone know what it is? Ah, percussion, you guys are way, way ahead. Super. Those are percussion instruments. You heard uh, on this side of the orchestra the timpani, which are tuned drums, and on this side you heard the vibraphone, which is like a xylophone, except the bars are made of metal, and the drum set. We'll hear a few more of those instruments in our very last piece today, which was uh, like all but the first piece on our, uh, like two of the pieces on our program, was written by an American composer, one of America's most famous and successful composers. Uh, he lived uh, over a century ago. His name was John Philip Sousa. Maybe some of you have heard of Sousa. Without him, who knows where uh, American music would be because he uh, popularized the concert band and uh, made the march uh, not only something useful for marching around in parades, but a concert staple. And in 1896, he wrote his most famous composition, the one we're about to play. It's called The Stars and Stripes Forever. And you can go to any country on earth and play it, and people will be delighted to hear it, not only because uh, it's famous, but because of the way Sousa constructed it. Um, we hear some amazing melodies and a very famous middle section, which is then decorated by what are called counter melodies, one uh, very famous one for the piccolo, and then at the very end for the trombones. So please enjoy uh, our very special version of the Stars and Stripes Forever. I hope many of you uh, will think about the opportunity to play a musical instrument when it becomes time to choose one in your school and consider that that could take you on a journey that could put you on this very stage with some very distinguished and brilliant young people who work very hard to produce these concerts, uh, which reminds me that they uh, need to be thanked by you for the demos that they prepared for you of music that you could recognize. Would you thank the musicians of the Portland Youth Philharmonic, please? They absolutely deserve that, and please enjoy this very famous piece, The Stars and Stripes Forever. Thank you. 